Morgan Robertson's novel Futility predicted the Titanic disaster in a truly astonishing way. The Titan ship in the book, like the Titanic, was described as unsinkable and similarly did not have enough lifelines. Both ships hit an iceberg around midnight in April. Robertson's prediction of actual events in such detail has led some to label him a seer. The Titanic's fourth chimney was not only for aesthetic purposes, but also for ventilation. This chimney evacuated smoke from the galley and engine rooms. In addition, ships with four chimneys were seen as a symbol of power and luxury at the time, so the White Star Line chose this design to gain a competitive advantage. The Titanic's boiler room number six began burning in Belfast and was extinguished a day before hitting the iceberg. For many years, this fire on the Titanic was a little-known fact. Recent research has shown that the fire weakened the ship's structure and increased the impact of the collision with the iceberg. This suggests that the sinking of the Titanic was the result of a series of unfortunate events, not just an iceberg collision. Harold Bride has a truly remarkable story. Harold Bride, who worked in the radio room, was the only man to survive the sinking to the end. With both legs broken, the young man continued to send SOS signals until the last moment. He also continued to work on the Carpathia, the ship that came to Titanic's aid. The postal clerks on the Titanic were extremely devoted to their duties and, even though they knew the ship was sinking, they tried to save their mailbags until the last moment. This shows the importance of the postal service at that time. In the last chapter of Amin Malouf Samarkand, it is written that Omar Khayyam's manuscript rubas are in a safe on the Titanic. The Atlantic Ocean swallowed the rubase along with the Titanic. This detail in Amin Malouf's novel, although not based on a real event, shows that the sinking of the Titanic was used as a literary device to symbolize cultural and historical loss. In a story written in 1892, William T. Stead tells the story of a ship that hits an iceberg and sinks, including himself in the story. The ship in the story, in which the author is among the survivors, is called the Titanic. The name of one of the passengers who drowned on the Titanic, which sank 20 years after the story was published, is William T. Stead. Stead's story is an interesting example of how reality can sometimes go beyond fiction. Stead was one of the leading journalists of his time and lost his life on the Titanic. His story reflects what some have characterized as a prophecy. One of the many myths that emerged in the aftermath of the disaster was that Captain Smith, who died in Titanic when the ocean broke a window and flooded in, did not actually die, but was seen by his old friend Captain Pryle buying a train ticket to Washington on July 19, 1912. Historians, however, except that Smith went down with his ship and did not survive. Such stories reflect the feelings of denial and hope that emerge in the wake of great tragedies. The miners' strike indirectly resulted in fewer people being on the Titanic. With a capacity of 2,436 passengers, the Titanic sails into the ocean with 1,316 passengers. Before setting sail, many passengers cancel their tickets. This is because the mine workers are on strike. This is an interesting detail that shows the unexpected connections of history. It also shows the power and influence of the labor movement at the time. Lorraine Allison's story is indeed tragic. Two-year-old Lorraine was a first-class passenger with her family. It is said that her parents refused to leave the Titanic. Lorraine's baby is one of the many personal items found in the wreckage of the ship, revealing the human dimension of the disaster. 